Okay, so let's just finish off the packet. Um, let's just recap. Remember the golden rule, the tricks, right? So when we have a solid, we have our grams molecular weight and moles triangle. When we have a solution, which is aqueous, we have our concentration moles and volume triangle. Okay, what relates to two is a consistent number of moles. Yeah, so when we dissolve a pile of sugar into some water, I don't change the number of water, uh, the number of sugar molecules when it dissolves, do I? They're just swimming around in there. Now they're free to move around and not just in a pile. It's the same number, same number of moles. So that's why the moles is consistent between the two. So we use this first one to work out the moles of sugar in the pile, just using grams molecular weight and moles. Then hey, once it's dissolved and we have the volume it's swimming around in, and the same number of consistent moles, we can work out the strength or the concentration. Okay. Now, we can do a similar thing in this practice question, all right, but it's kind of in reverse. Okay, so what I want you guys to do is try it, right? Okay, remember the three triangles, plan yourself a journey. Actually, maybe let's plan the journey first, right? So what mass of NaCl is contained within a certain strength and volume solution? So we have a beaker, right, and it's 0.50 liters, and it has a strength of 6.0 moles per liter strength. So that means, you know, M means moles per liter strength, right? So 6.0 moles per liter strength, okay, or concentration, okay? Now, if you think about it, we can go from concentration volume to moles. So we use that first kind of solution triangle there. Now, once we've got moles, we can figure out how many grams of salt are in there, right? So pause there, try it and then come back and we'll look at how to do it. Okay, so I'm hoping you tried it. So common sense, let's think about this just for a second, right? If I've got some six moles per liter strength solution and I've got half a liter of it, there's six moles in one liter, so there must be three in 0.5. So that's what we use, right? So moles equals CV, all right? which equals concentration, 6.0, I'll put the proper units, moles per liter, which is M, you know, times 0 0.5 liters, 3.0 moles. There's three moles of NaCl in there, okay? Three moles of NaCl, makes sense, yeah? Half a liter of six moles in one liter strength, three moles. All right, now, then we'll move to the other triangle. Therefore, because I've got three moles of NaCl, all right, let's go back up here. I want to find grams, right? Grams is molecular weight times moles. Grams equals molecular weight times moles, which equals NaCl, we saw it on the previous page, has a molecular weight of uh, 58.3, I think it was. Let me just double check. Yeah, so from one of those um, previous calculations we did, 58.3. 58.3 grams per mole times 3.0 moles equals, hopefully you got the same answer I did, let's just do it together, 58.3 times 3 equals 174.9, three sig figs, 175 grams approximately. Okay, so there it is, oh, move it up so you can see it. I apologize, I did that again. So let's just recap, okay. So I worked out the moles of NaCl swimming around in here. Concentration times volume is moles. And you know, if I wanna work out the weight of those things just by themselves, the grams is the molecular weight times moles from our solid triangle, if you like this one here, okay. Molecular weight, salt, NaCl 58.3 times three moles, 175 grams. All right. Now, last thing, okay, last, uh, last packet question, all right. Sometimes you can mix and match the solid triangle, all right, so we do grams, molecular weight, and moles for a solid, with the aqueous triangle, concentration, volume, and moles, right, okay. So if you get a mixture of reagents, solid and aqueous, you can use CV moles triangle for aqueous, grams molecular weight moles for solid. So let's look at this. We're gonna incorporate it into a slides and ladders. So what mass of calcium carbonate would completely react with 100 milliliters of two molar HCl? 
Okay, now that's a one there. It's just one we've done before a bunch of times, right? We could fill out all the all the grids, but our destination is here. All right. So we're given a hundred milliliters. Ah, careful, that has to be in liters, right? So a hundred milliliters is point one. All right. Two moles per liter strength. Two point oh moles per liter. Now, if I do my quick triangle down here. Concentration, moles, volume. Moles is concentration times, oh, moles is concentration times volume, right? So for the solution, I have to multiply to go down. What's point 0.1 times two? 0 0.2. This is making my life super simple, isn't it, right? So I've chosen some easy numbers here, all right? Point 0.2 in a two to one ratio needs how much? Two reacts with one to be perfect. Point two needs point one. Okay, this isn't a limiting reactant problem. I'm working out how much I need to be perfect, right? So I'm not throwing two things in at once. I've got to find out if you like how much I need to throw in to make it be perfect. All right, molecular weight of that thing. We've seen it before, 100 grams per mole. Now this guy here, molecular weight, grams and moles. Let's remind ourselves, I want grams, multiply to go up. 10 grams. Oh, that was easy. Okay, so I need 10 grams. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, oh, I forgot one thing. Look what I did. What volume of CO2 would be collected? Well, again, we don't have a box for volume, but one reacts, one reacts with two to make one, one, and one. So 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. 0.1, okay? So 0 0.1 moles CO2 is what we'd make. Oh, I apologize, I keep doing that. 0 0.1 moles of CO2 is what we'd make times one mole is 22.4 liters, which equals 0 0.1 times 22.4, 2.24 liters. All right, now, <clears throat> I'm feeling kind of generous, right? Because <laughs> you got to the end of the packet, which is, you know, it's a bit of a stretch, this packet. It's kind of tough. Good job to get to the end, okay? Now, what I've got here is quite a challenging um, question, okay? I'm going to give you some clues, but I'm going to make it worth a little bit of extra credit. So what I want you guys to do is work out this problem and yeah, you can talk to each other, right? So work out this problem and then take a picture of this and it's going to be worth five points. Okay, and I'll give you like, hmm, let's say, you know, the type the day you hand in that um, phosphate lab, you can hand this in as well. So I'll give you until there, okay? So I'll put it up on the discussion area, right? Now, this is a tricky question, not because of what we're doing here, which is just the basic slides and ladders, but because of the balancing numbers here. Okay, it's because of the balancing numbers here. Okay, so let's balance this one together. If it's balanced, you guys will be able to do this quite straightforwardly, okay? So, iron, iron, two there, two there, okay. Oh, but wait a minute, it's three oxygens, two ox. oh, it's the whole three two thing, so I need two threes and three twos. Six oxygens, six oxygens, but now I've got four ions, so that has to be a four there. Okay, so what you're gonna do, you're gonna set up a slides and ladders with four Fe plus three O2 gas goes to two Fe two O3. Okay, so calculate the mass of iron three oxide produced, so grams, molecular weight, moles. Well, you can take it from there. That's your destination. You have that. Okay, so there's a hint, right? Okay, get that number there. All right. Now, the challenging part, if the journey would to be written, it'd be that, wouldn't it? All right. Now, the challenging part is the number of molecules of oxygen used, right? So you've got to get that number, but it's in a four to three ratio. So the tricky part is how do I turn a four into a three? It will involve fractions. Here, I've got to think about that. That's why it's extra credit, okay? So once you've got the moles of O2, all right, you can turn that via Avogadro into number of molecules. 
But remember, I'll give you a big clue here, right? This is in the four to three ratio, right? So if I want this, how do I go from here to here? How do I turn a four into a three? Oh, that's tricky, right? Three is actually three quarters of four, right? So <laughs> this is four times three over four equals three. So to go from here to here, you just don't apply by three over four. That's why it's a tricky question, okay? Because you're not multiplying or dividing by an integer, you're multiplying by three quarters. Sorry, you're mul yeah, you're multiplying by three quarters, which is a fraction, all right? So that second part is a little trickier, but you know, given this roadmap, hopefully you'll be able to do it. So print out this page, blank, do your work, nice and clear, put a box around your answers, right? And just pretend it's an old exam question. Send it to me as a picture. Just take a picture with your phone, email attachment, give you five points. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. That's the end of the packet, so good job. All right.